So this evening we're looking at the impact of strikes on our economy and we're asking the question, are mine workers or farm workers solving anything by going on strike? Michael Bagram is president of the Cape Chamber of Commerce. He's with us in our Cape Town studios. Thanks very much for your time, Michael. Initially, to start off with, with the mining issue that's currently dominating our headlines, uh, we, there were suggestions that Amplat's decision to go ahead uh, to cut these 14,000 jobs was merely an, an act of retaliation after the, the violence protests that we saw last year uh, but now it appears 250 executives will be among those who, who could lose their jobs yeah thank you for that I'm, I'm no longer the president of the Cape Chamber of Commerce I'm their labor analyst uh, the bottom line is I don't think it's a they're not trying to get anyone back but certainly the strikes have concentrated the mines bosses and they've had a look at the situation and clearly they have to have a complete restructure. Uh, strikes tend to do that. Uh, I, I'm a labor lawyer myself, and every time a strike happens, one looks at the entire production, whether you require everyone. It also makes you have a look at what you've been able to do with the scab labor on how little labor you actually need in circumstances such as this. So clearly the strikes that took place in the mining industry have had the mining bosses have a complete rethink of what they require, what shafts are making money, and where they must turn to in the future. So in terms of the Labor Relations Act, as soon as they contemplate the possibility of the retrenchment, of the dismissals for operational requirements, they need to inform the unions, and obviously AMCU being the majority union and NUM the minority union, they need to inform them that they're now going to embark upon this retrenchment exercise. It does look like we'll have 15,000 people out of a job, and I believe it's directly caused by the strike. Um, we're seeing the same here in the Western Cape with the farmers, where the farmers are telling us that they've had to have a rethink. They're re-looking at it, they're trying to mechanize, they're trying to look at better systems so that they have less staff. Some of the farmers are reported back saying, they can make good with at least 50% of their staff. So it's the strike that concentrates the mind. Uh, how does one balance the, the, the need for human rights, the, the commitment that one has to one's workers, or one should have to one's workers, to make sure that they, they can make a decent living uh, working for you, but at the same time try and to continue to be a, a profitable organization or business? Yeah, look, there must be a way of looking at the balance between the interests of the workers and the interest of the shareholders or the farmer that that balance is something that has to be carefully trod on it's a, it's a middle path um, for instance with the farmers that we're seeing over here many of these farmers are saying that their industry is at at risk um, some of the farmers are saying that at even at 105 rand they're going to have to close the farm down, sell it, bank the money, and do something else. Uh, we've also had a farmer, I spoke to a farmer this morning in the Dudurans area, who told me that he has now located machinery, and instead of 160 people on his farm, he can do with 20. Now, that, that's not good for our economy by any stretch of the imagination. What is also not good, and I think we must all, all accept this, that you can't have slave labor, that you can't have. So what we do understand is that every farmer has to balance that very carefully. We need the existence of the farm, otherwise we've got no work at all, and it'll threaten our food. But we also need to know that the laborers are not starving. And at the moment, the wage at 69 rand per day, or even anything up to 80 rand a day, we've seen from the economists is just not sustainable. It, is, it creates a slave instead of a worker, and that's the problem. It's a problem that's a perennial problem. Every year we face it with the wage negotiations. Hopefully our government, and through the Minister of Labor, is now coming to a figure, and I think they're going to probably settle around about 100, 105 rand on that. In terms of the mines, we can't say that the price of the metal, all the different metal is going down, because it's going up. It was reported on your station this morning. So the metal is good. They need to have a look at what is sustainable in the long term. How can you get those shafts to make money? Once you're making money, then yes, you have to share that with the workforce.
Uh, Michael, uh, Kasatu calls this a myth, but uh, traditionally in the media we have referred to this period during which strikes largely take place as strike season. Uh, that, that seems to, to have, have been dispelled over the last year. It, it appears strikes now happen um, uh, randomly all over the country uh, when they can least be predicted. Has, has the nature of protest in this country, has it changed radically in the last few years? Now, we, we're living through a major change at the moment. The whole industrial relations system has been turned on its head. Uh, I've been involved in industrial relations and labor law for the last 25 years. I've never seen anything like this. And start with the Marikana disaster, where the unions didn't really have control. Uh, we saw that NUM, which was the traditional union in the, in the farm, in the mines, was challenged. We saw AMCU make a, a big statement. And a lot of the workers were out on a frolic of their own. And I think of it, a lot of it was called for in the sense that people were feeling desperate. They were feeling that the unions weren't serving them. They were feeling that the mining bosses didn't care. And people were literally starving. So it does create a problem. What, what, what are the immediate interventions that we can make, uh, knowing there are monetary limitations uh, and there's only so much workers can actually get with, without a company uh, becoming unprofitable, but what are the major interventions that we can make at this point uh, in order to level those playing fields and continue uh, to make our businesses profitable? Well, I think the first intervention is that we need our government to be more involved. We certainly need our Minister of Labor not to disappear at the time when you have a whole industry on fire. She wasn't anywhere to be seen when the mining strikes happened, which was probably the worst strikes this country has ever experienced since 1922, when you had those strikes on the Rand, those gold strikes, 1922. And now in the Cape, there can't be anything more serious that's happening in the Cape, and the farming industry is up in flames. And this is the second time it's happened, and each time our minister has been wholly unavailable. Uh, it's almost ridiculous. We've got the systems, we've got the law in place, we've got uh, the CCMA who are there, ready, willing and able, and somehow the government is very scarce. Now they're stepping in uh, when it, a lot of the farms are burnt down already. Uh, I would be desperate if I was a farmer at this point. Michael Bagram, Labour Analyst, thank you very much for talking to us.